Hey my souls, welcome to my video about the six things I do when I get stuck in a spiritual rut, when I just don't feel myself, when my spiritual practice is not on point. And first of all, I want to greet all of you. I'm Anya Esma because there's been a lot more of you ever since I uploaded my Harmony Nice video. That makes me very happy. Thank you so much for joining me and for taking interest in me. It really means a lot to me. And yes, no matter where you are on your path, whether you're still um, in the beginning of being a Wiccan or a witch, or you're just spiritual in general, you're into yoga, meditation, whatever spiritual path you are on, whatever you would call yourself or not call yourself, whatever label you want to be under or not be under, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so for the future, I have a lot more stuff planned. If you have any video ideas, let me know what you'd love to see. I definitely want to speak about makeup and self-love, show you more of my jewelry collection, finally, um, part two of my jewelry collection, and maybe make another video about the most interesting aspects of Harmony Nice's books, because there were some interesting ideas that I didn't quite get to talk about in my review video because it already got so, so long. Yes. Now let's jump into the spiritual rut issue. We all know that feeling where maybe you had a rock solid meditation practice every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or you laid your tarot cards every day, or maybe you uh, did yoga every day, you did astral travel once a week, maybe you became a Wiccan six months ago, but it doesn't feel fiery anymore, maybe you got into tarot and sort of got stuck in a rut with that, it doesn't feel as inspiring and as sparkly as it did in the beginning. And that's exactly the feeling we want to come to terms with here and find ways out of that and find ways to be inspired again. So these are the six steps that I go through if I notice that I'm not as dedicated to my practice as I used to be and not as inspired by it. Now, this is an issue for me because spirituality does have a lot to do with my health, with my mental health, with my physical health, keeping myself accountable, feeling good about myself. So I feel it is something that I always want to keep at a high level if I can. Of course, if this isn't for you, then it's okay if you're stuck in a spiritual rut as long as you don't feel like you want to do better. But if you want to do better and if you want to connect more, this is definitely a video for you. Number one, take mind of your body and your environment. This is very important to me because I don't notice how messy it gets around me. If my altar gets messy, if my sacred space gets messy, if my apartment gets messy, I sometimes tend to just ignore it because I'm fine with it. But on some level, sometimes in some bad moments, it does affect me. So the first step is look at how your apartment is doing, how your room is doing, how even just your bed, your altar, whatever little space you have for yourself is doing. And also look at how you are dressed. Because for me, especially oversized clothing, it makes me feel comfortable, but then it makes me feel really unproductive and really slothy, if you know what I mean. So I don't even notice, like I feel sort of off. And then I realize like, wait, it's because I'm not wearing something that speaks to my heart, something that makes me feel good about myself. So taking mind of your body, which also means water intake or how much you've worked out and taking mind of your environment as in, is it clean? Is it nice? Is it how you would want it to be? is the first very important step because sometimes we just forget about that. We get stuck in this rut where we don't know why we should even go to the altar if you have an altar or why we should even sit down on our meditation pillow or why we should even astral travel or why we should even learn about herbs, whatever you're into, astrology. 
and getting to a place where your body and your environment are ready and receptive rather than cluttered is the first step. This actually leads well into step number two, which is set a time and a place, no compromises. You will find the odd 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour to do your spiritual thing, the thing that you would usually do, whether it's laying tarot cards, journaling, yoga, you just do it. You force yourself to do it. And I know that sometimes it feels like, why would you do it? Like, ah, uh, rather stay on the couch. It's not that necessary, you know? But if we're honest with ourselves, once we start, it often becomes very enriching. It's only the start that's hard sometimes. The connections you can trust that they will come. There are connections you make, like if you read something and you read about, let's say, rosemary, like I did the other day, then suddenly I start connecting it, the dots to um, my bodily health, my hair, maybe I should make a rosemary rinse. And then I start looking into what rosemary means in a magical way. And you know, it just snowballs from there. So giving yourself a starting point, a set time, um, is very important and can be very helpful to reconnecting with your practice in a way that is creative and inspiring to you. Now this plays into point three very well, which is reflect on your routine. If your routine feels stale, uncreative, you've done it a billion times, you always lay out three cards in the beginning of your day or you always meditate for five minutes with the exact same music or you always have a certain address that you speak, certain words you say to your goddesses and it's always the same. This is what we want to reflect on next. I think this is very pivotal to finding um, inspiration in your practice because a lot of the time we just get stuck in ways that seem to work for us. They used to switch us on spiritually, but somewhere along the way, it just, it doesn't do it anymore. You want to move to the next level, you know? Or even if you work on the same shadow, on the same issues, you journal about the same things, it can all feel very uninspiring after a while. So what I would suggest is identifying which parts of your practice feel like this to you, which parts don't feel great. For example, if I say the same prayer or the same address to a matron or patron every day, then switch it up, say something different. If you work with the same herb or the same crystal every day, switch it up. And I'm not saying go out and buy 10 crystals. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But find a different way to work with it even maybe. Maybe you have always looked at your amethyst as the stone that helps you remember your dreams. Well, how about you switch it up and actually hold it in your hand during meditation and let it heighten your intuition? You know, sometimes we have certain tools that we only use for one thing in the end. And that's where the creativity begins and ends. And we want to expand it here. And what I'm speaking about specifically is changing up your routine without abandoning it. So if you have a certain goddess that you are dedicated to, a certain herb that you want to look into, a certain crystal, or if you want to learn about tarot, don't just throw it out and be like, okay, I'm going to move on to the next thing now that's more exciting. We want to get the excitement back with the things you are already doing. Or maybe see if you can find another book or even just another website to look at that gives you something new about the tools you have, about the practices you have, about the words you say and take it from there. Identify the thing that feels stale in your routine and think about how you can take it to the next level or at least give it a different spin to make it feel new and creative again, you know? This ties into point number four, which is find something you are excited about. Maybe six months ago, you were really into mushrooms or you were really into astrology and you've spent six months learning about mushrooms. 
but now it's time to move on. If you truly feel like you are being called in a different direction, don't be scared to go there. It is on you to know whether you tend to be a person who drops things too fast or who holds on to things too firmly and doesn't want to move on. Because I also know people who are like, no, I have to stick with this. I have to stick with astrology, maybe because on my Instagram page, it says that I'm into astrology, so I have to stick with it. You know what I mean? Just be open to finding things that you're actually excited about. Maybe you'll return to astrology another time. If you really can't revive your practice right now, forgive yourself and move on to the next thing that actually gives you a spark. Maybe you suddenly want to learn about palm reading or about more divination or about spellcraft. Going back to the basics is sometimes so inspiring. Even if you've done a spell or two or 10 or 20, it's always cool to go back to reading a basic book about spellcraft and, you know, just theorizing about it again, at least for me. But if that doesn't work for you, then you'll find something different that you're interested in. Maybe you want to plant a fairy garden, you know. There's always something new and something cool that you can try. And that's the magic of witchcraft, if you ask me. There are so many things because everything is connected. And rather than holding on to one thing and kind of having the connections that it has to everything else wither away, move on to the next thing and see the connections to the thing that you were obsessed about before with the new thing you're obsessed about. And there's a lot of beauty in that. Step number five, journal your way to your assumptions. What I mean by this is we all have assumptions about ourselves and about our spiritual practice, about how much we can do, what we cannot do. For example, I will never be an astrologer. Why would I learn about astrology in the first place? Or I'm stuck in my spiritual practice. Maybe I wasn't made for this. Or I just can't remember all 78 meanings of tarot cards. I'm just going to give up. Or I'm just not a person who can remember things well. You know, we all have these doubts and these thoughts and these assumptions and being aware of them, especially when they pertain to your practice getting limited because you think you don't have permission or the ability to do something, to go into the direction of goddess worship or demons or another kind of spellcraft that you've never tried. You know, all of these things, you can feel out whether they are for you or not. But there is magic in feeling it out rather than saying that you assume you're not going to be into it or it's too big for you, it's too scary for you. You know, just be aware and use discernment to find out what you want to explore rather than shutting yourself off from something because you think it is not for you. Now, step number six, the last one, is become aware of your cycles and forgive yourself. What I mean by this is that we all have natural energy cycles that we tend towards, that we have a certain tendency to inhabit. For example, if you have your menstruation, or if the moon is waning, or if you haven't been to the gym in two weeks, then there are, there's a high chance that you will feel less energetic. You will feel like you are out of touch with your body, with your mind. And this out of touchedness, for me especially, this lack of connection to the universe is what gets me the most if I'm in a spiritual rut. I just feel cut off. And it is actually in my hands to reestablish that connection with the five steps that I just talked about. But of course, sometimes there's also periods where I know that maybe it is not the right time right now and I should forgive myself for not being a spiritual beacon of creativity. You know, sometimes it's just about sticking with the basics, about actually just sitting down, giving yourself five minutes of reading time and then stopping if it's not good enough. 
or if it doesn't inspire you, which never happens, honestly. Once you sit down and you tell yourself you're gonna read for five minutes, you usually read much longer because once you start, it gets inspiring and it captures you, you know? So I would encourage you to kind of journal about which times of the month you feel plugged in and which times of the month or even the year you sort of feel disconnected. And then you can tweak your practice accordingly. Maybe if you notice that you're sliding into sort of a slump, of course, you can prevent it by um, lighting that fire again, by using those steps from before, but you can also make up a light version, if you will, of your rituals, of your spellcraft, of your practice. And this light version might even just be five minutes of meditation or 10 minutes of yoga or 20 minutes of reading time, whatever you feel is usually a cornerstone of your spiritual practice. Just use this, strip it down to the bone and just do that in order to make it easier to handle for your spiritual slothy self. So using gentle force to push yourself into the things that have always come easy to you is one of the ways in which you can stay a teensy bit connected so you won't feel quite as taken out of it. So if reading tarot has always come easy to you, do that. If reading a book is the easiest for you, do that. And if those things suddenly aren't easy anymore, that's also okay. Then go back and sort of retweak your practice as it fits you and as it inspires you and lights you on fire. Maybe just let me know what your favorite way is to recharge your spiritual batteries or your tarot batteries is in the comments because I'd love to hear about that and I think it could be an interesting discussion as well. Okay, so those were the six ways, but I actually had um, a very dear Instagram friend, Amethyst Soul, talk about how to restore your tarot reading energy. Because I know sometimes we feel like we don't want to touch our tarot decks and it's sort of the same as not wanting to meditate, not wanting to go to your altar. You sort of have this resistance sometimes where you cannot quite get into the right mindset. And this I definitely want to make a separate video about. I feel like a lot of it is going to overlap with this video though, but I definitely feel like there's some exercises that you can do in tarot to get back that inspiration and to recharge your tarot batteries. But I also want to say it's okay to take a tarot break. If you don't want to pull a card every day anymore, or if you want to pull three cards instead of one card, then do that. That's also a great way to switch up your practice. Draw more cards, draw less cards, draw cards that are um, have different meanings, such as you could have one card that stands for the best use of your energy today, one that stands for a disadvantageous use of your energy, and one that stands for spirit messages. That is what I do right now. I have this little three card spread. But of course you can do it in any possible, whoa, my ring just flew off, in any possible way to keep yourself inspired and engaged. Okay, so yes, there's going to be a lot more videos to come about self-love, about jewelry, about witchcraft, and about recharging your tarot batteries. And I hope you will stay with me or subscribe to me if you liked this video. And yes, I wish you the best of days, the best of nights, the most plugged in spiritual awesome experience. Check out my other videos if you feel called to it. Enjoy, dwell. Have a great day. I love you all and I'll see you next time. Okie dokie.